Toronto is in the dish with one spoon territory. The dish with one spoon is a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas, the Haudenosaunee, and the land. The treaty was created to share and protect what is still their traditional territory. The area around the Great Lakes represents the dish that we all feed from, and we must share with one spoon. Subsequent Indigenous nations, Europeans, and all newcomers have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect for the land that we now share. We are all treaty people, and it is our responsibility to maintain the spirit of the Dish with One Spoon covenant. Union solidarity is based on the principle that all union members are equal. Mutual respect, cooperation, and understanding are our goals. We neither condone nor tolerate behavior that undermines the dignity or self-esteem of any individual or creates an intimidating, hostile, or offensive environment. Discriminatory speech or conduct based on gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, race, disability, age, class, religion, ethnic origin, membership, work category, or family status hurts and divides us. Discrimination can take the form of harassment, defined as using real or perceived power, to abuse, devalue, or humiliate. Discrimination and harassment weaken our solidarity, reducing our capacity to work together on shared concerns, such as decent wages, safe working conditions, and justice for all. Actor activities are to be harassment-free zones, where our members' dignity and equality are respected. So I went off looking for an agent, and I had an agent tell me, well, I already have one black actress, and I lost her. And I thought, so you got one blonde, one brunette, one redhead? And it was all sort of a lump that, you know, Tabby Johnson, Bobby Sharon, uh, Jackie Richardson, um, Somi Bay, myself, and Arlene Duncan, even though we were different ages, different skills, we were just one lump. This is around 83, the same agent in 93, 10 years later, when I was putting together into the mainstream, literally said, if you know of any good, talented uh, performers of color, send them my way. And I said, well, you've got 12 on your roster already. And she said, yeah, but you know, and I reminded her of this incident. And she said, well, you know, at that time, it just wasn't any work. And I said, was it that there wasn't any work or that there wasn't any talent that people knew about? We started into the mainstream. We brought visible minorities, audible minorities, people with accents, disabled performers and native performers together, mm -hmm. right? Because we said, these are the people who are being marginalized. We kept hearing casting directors saying, I would love to cast more visible minorities. I just can't find them. I would love, but you know, there's only six and we'd have to use them over and over again. So, isn't that called stars? Right. I would love, but you know, I can't put a family together because there's no children. Meanwhile, we all knew it's <laughs> people. So our first book was 204 people. So whenever we heard that, we went there. Hi, everybody. Before we get into the awards, I want to tell you a little bit about the late, great Sandy Ross, who changed Actra Toronto forever. Her achievements were many, but first, a little bit about the woman. Sandy Ross was born in the United States and earned her BFA at the University of Minnesota. Shortly after that, she moved to Toronto and made it her adopted home. Sandy worked as an actor on screen and stage here and in the US, working with the likes of John Hirsch, Martha Henry, Maya Angelou, Robert Townsend, and Sidney Lumet. She could do it all comedy, drama, stage, screen, you name it. She was even nominated for a Canadian Comedy Award in 2011. But it was in Sandy's activism where she truly made her name. Always a strong voice for equity, she volunteered her wisdom and passion to many organizations, from the Canadian Race Relations Advisory Council on Advertising, to the Racial Equity Committee of the Canada Council, to the Laidlaw Foundation. She spoke up for the underrepresented. Her efforts did not go unrewarded. She received the Skills for Change New Pioneers Award for the Arts in 1993, the Women in Film and Television's Crystal Award in 2008, and even was listed in Chatelaine's ninth edition of Who's Who of Canadian Women. And proudly, Sandy was named Actra National's Woman of the Year in 2012. 
Our years of volunteering for ACTRA Toronto did not overlap. However, we did see each other at ACTRA events. Every time she saw me, I was greeted with a huge hug and she would ask me if I was running for president yet. Then, pitch me on a new cooking show. Sadly, Sandy Ross passed away in 2016 and remained passionate until the day she died. She would have been so proud to see her legacy living on. Hi everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight for the Sandy Ross Awards. Yes, every year the Sandy Ross Awards honor the activism and accomplishments of individuals and companies in the film and television industry who do an outstanding job of incorporating diversity and inclusion into their work. For those of you who don't know of Sandy Ross, she was the first woman and person of color to be the president of ACTRA Toronto and was the founder of ACTRA Toronto's first diverse talent directory into the mainstream, which continues online today at diversity.actraonline.ca. So the Sandy Ross Awards were originally launched in 2016 as the hashtag share the screen awards by former diversity and inclusion co-chairs Sedna Fiati and Farah Marani. The tradition of hosting the awards continued with previous DNI committee co-chairs Lisa Michelle Cornelius and Samora Smallwood and has now been passed down to us. We are your current DNI committee co-chairs, Janet Rose Wynn and myself, Shatrice Stolabai. Previous award winners include an impressive list of industry giants, Sinking Ship Entertainment and Dawn Wilkinson in 2016, Hungry Eyes Media and Natalie Young Lai in 2017, Frankie Drake Mysteries and Tanya Williams in 2018, Thunderbird Entertainment and Floyd Kane in 2019, and last year, Working the Scene in Color and Winifred Jong in 2020. And to determine the 2021 winners, the committee and past co-chairs got together to discuss the contributions of so many influential individuals and groups who are working in our industry. And we are super excited now to present the winners of this year's Sandy Ross Awards. Let's just say there was a lot of healthy debate because there are so many amazing choices to pick from. Um, there is no shortage of great work here being done here on the diversity and inclusion front. That is right. And so without further ado, our first winner. The winner for the individual Sandy Ross Award is a Mohawk writer, director, and showrunner whose two decades of experience spans documentary, television, and film. In television, she helms the hit dramedy Mohawk Girls as co-creator, co-showrunner, and director. It's a great show if you haven't seen it. The success propelled her to co-executive producer on the third season of the Netflix and CBC series, and with an E. Her debut feature film, Beans, premiered at TIFF in 2020 to critical acclaim, garnering her the prestigious TIFF Emerging Talent Award, two Canadian Screen Awards, including Best Picture, and title as one of Variety's 10 screenwriters to watch. The film brought renewed visibility to the 1990 Oka crisis at a time when a focus on Indigenous sovereignty and the harm that colonialism has done to Indigenous peoples has finally started to get the widespread attention it deserves. She also proudly serves as Vice President at the Directors Guild of Canada, is on the board of the Academy of Canadian Cinema and Television, and has championed diverse representation in every project she touches. Today, we are pleased to present the individual 2021 Sandy Ross Award to none other than Tracy Deer. <laughs> so there's an award named after her to celebrate an individual and an organization that really strives to oh I just got shivers because strives to create an equitable and diverse film industry and really shows that in their work and the reason we want you there is because you are the winner oh my god <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> Yeah, um, the committee spoke about uh, the committee That's... spoke about it, and you are. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Thank you. So <laughs> it, it, it really was good, good news. news. <laughs> it really was good news. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am. I am so incredibly honored to accept this award and this, this incredible recognition. 
it means so much to me because uh, as a little as a little girl, as a little Mohawk girl uh, growing up, I did feel just so invisible and for multiple reasons. Um, but what we see on our screens is is so important in indicating to society who matters and who has a voice. And I definitely grew up with with the clear the clear indication that um, Indigenous people did not matter. And, and I have really wanted to do every single thing I possibly could in my career and in my work to, to change that reality. And it's, it's been incredible to see uh, where we've come in the last 30 years, ever since I decided I wanted to be a filmmaker at 12 years old. So to now be here and getting this kind of recognition for that work, I'm really, I'm really, I'm so, so touched. Um, I care so much. I care so much about making things better <laughs> for our kids, for our communities, for all of us. Um, we all... We all deserve space. And the fact that you think that my work is, is being a part of that positive change, I'm just so, so, so honored. Thank you so much for this incredible recognition. This group identified a gap in the sketch comedy market and found a way to strategically mix activism with humor. Measuring in collectively at a whopping 25 feet and two inches, this troupe has quite the perspective to share. They worked for several years in stage-based sketch comedy with their stage show, A 6N Review, winning the award for best comedy at the 2018 Toronto Fringe Festival and best of the Fest Award from Montreal Sketch Fest and then Outstanding Comedy Short at Toronto Sketch Fest 2018. Then, in 2019, CBC greenlit Tall Boys, a comedy sketch show that would focus on themes like race, toxic masculinity, and friendship, and allow all four of these brilliant comedic voices to reach the entire country. The Globe and Mail has described the show as one that trips lightly through issues of race and misogyny, but never so lightly that there isn't both original humor and the sharp sting of relevant satire. Today, we are so incredibly pleased to present the 2021 Sandy Ross Award to the comedy troupe Tall Boys to Men. Vince Banzo, Gulerati, Franco Wynn, and Tim Blair. Woo! <laughs> so we were really hoping uh, that the four of you could, again, scheduling, somehow make it work and attend our awards, which will be online this year, because Tall Boys to Men is the winner of the group award this year. Oh, wow. Wow, yeah, what? Wow. I thought you were here to ask us for suggestions. I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. Google yeah, people. I I'm like, like, I'm like who produces the next stop series? I gotta find out who that is. I'm like, I really like that show. I'm like, <laughs> hello, what town are we? It's on Zoom. Oh, hello, Zoom. We're incredibly honored to be this year's recipient of the Sandy Ross Award. We've been very fortunate to be uplifted by many diverse creatives in the city who have helped us reach this point. And now we're grateful to be in a position to pay that forward. Awards like this are not only extremely important, but incredibly encouraging. At times, being a troop that's diverse can feel like there's an unfair pressure to have your project succeed. Like if your work isn't good, racism wins. But today, we win. <laughs> uh, we want to give a shout out to our producers at Axe Entertainment, Susan, Thea, and Bruce for working passionately in pursuit of our shared vision create a world on screen that reflects the diversity of the reality we live in. While we are incredibly proud of the work we have done and the precedences that we've set, we do want, not want to be seen as the standard. Not that anyone sees us as the standard. We are an overdue seed and hope that there are more seeds to be planted in the future, i.e. now, and should have been in the past. Originally, in our first bio, we wrote that we are a diverse troop doing diverse things diversely. While initially it was tongue in cheek, it has come to mean a lot more to us in the last five years. We've been able to take up more space, and now we're able to elevate voices that haven't been amplified in the past. 
we still are a waste. We want to see more diversity in front and behind the camera. We don't just want to see diversity on stage. We want it backstage too. We want diversity in post and pre-production, in hair and makeup, in your cereal box as a prize. Here are some parting words of encouragement that have helped us. Your work matters. You matter. You're allowed to say you don't know, and you are always out loud to ask questions. Shout out to Karen Say. In conclusion, diversity, 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 diversity. Thank you. All of your faces, you looked truly surprised when you learned that you were winning this award this year. It was actually a lot of fun to see. So can you talk a little bit about what you were thinking or feeling in that moment? Tracy, did you want to start us off? Well, it, it was very emotional. Um, the, the work that I do, I think the work that, that all filmmakers, writers, directors do, it's, it can be so solitary and, and also, um, it's very, pa it's very passionate. I'm very passionate about what I do. And sometimes you, you just feel very alone, um, in, in, in the process. Uh, but, the, but then the work goes out there and you're hoping that it makes a difference. You're hoping that it's having an impact. I mean, it's the big, it's the big goal. Um, but you never, you don't really know. There's no, you know, there's no survey out there in the world to find out that the, the, the heart and soul I put out in the world, is it, is it, is it doing any of that? Um, and so I think when, when you did call and, t and told me that um, I was getting this award, it, it was a bit of that feedback coming back at me that um, what I am doing uh, is being, is being noticed, is making a difference. And that's, that's what I want. That's what I want to know. And so I'm getting emotional again. Um, so I was just so, I'm just so, so touched <laughs> um, to be recognized like that. Um, thank you. Absolutely. And thank you. Very well deserved. And I mean, the emotion was, you started drawing all of us into it. I am getting a little bit misty right now, just kind of because you're so real with it and the emotion is there. So thank you again for sharing that. And then it was emotional, just a different type of emotion, I think, uh, from the four of you. I don't know if any of you wanted to talk a little bit about how it felt to learn that Tall Boys to Men was winning a Sandy Ross Award this year. Totally just caught off guard. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes when you're doing the work, uh, I, I, I'm not thinking about like uh, recognitions and stuff like that. So. I, I forgot that was even a possibility <laughs> us winning an award or something like that. So it kind of like blind side of me. And there's a, a little bit of a relief too, because, um, you know, we're in the middle of shooting and we thought we had to think of names to submit for people to nominate. And so I remember just like the night before I'm like, let me just skim through my email. Anthony, Anthony Q Farrell. He's a great dude. Yeah. Let's get him in. Um, so part of it was like, oh, OK, <laughs> yes. But uh, I, I think also like when, um, yeah, I, I think also part of it, there's always like constant imposter syndrome. I can't speak for everyone else, but like for me, it's always like I'm def like I as much as I want to be this like the heroic person who always shouts and stands up for uh uh, what they believe in all, all the times there's I think there's so many moments where you know I, I, I would like to I feel like it's like a basketball rules where I'm like if I'm hitting 40 percent it's pretty good because I'm, I'm scared a lot <laughs> but there's a lot of moments where I feel like oh man I wish I would have spoken up harder I wish I was a little bit louder I wish I took up more space and uh, I'm really I'm uh, constantly thankful to be part of this quartet because I think if I were to go about these uh journeys alone uh i would feel very very alienated and i think i would be easily bullied but because i'm part of this i'm like one fourth of the teenage mutant ninja turtles um <laughs> you know i i feel like we can take on any shredder god <laughs> i love that so much yeah uh i guess uh I mean, we've always been, since we started this, um, pushing for diversity in front and behind the camera. We always wanted to raise up some of the people in the community that helped raise us up. So uh, the feeling, the initial feeling was just kind of like, yeah, this is, um, 
didn't expect it, but it's like, it's very, it, it's very nice. I mean, that's, uh, it does not, uh, I'm not too great with uh, articulating my feelings all the time, but uh, yeah, it was just very, very nice to, to have that recognition. Like, yeah, we are, we are making a difference, um, you know, we, with our pushes and with our requests and, you know, the way we cast and the way we want our, the makeup of our production. Well, that's awesome. Thank you for all of your answers. And um, yeah, and Tracy, when you, what your video, when you accept it, I, I, te I teared up as well. And just now too. So um, it's really great that you all um, appreciate, you know, because we appreciate you. So um, I'd love to ask the question next is, can you describe for us the moment you decided that creativity would be your career? Um, and we can start off with uh, Vance because you're on my screen right now and then moving on. Uh, yeah, um, I think I was working in dinner theater. I think I just did um, my first stand up set. It was like five minutes and uh, I threw a coat at the audience. That's how I broke, broke the ice and I broke some glasses at the same time. And uh, <laughs> and it like, I don't know, I got off set and the, I got off the set and a bunch of comments were like, oh, it's your first time. Duh, duh, duh. And that was just kind of my feeling like, yeah, maybe I couldn't, can do this. You know, I'm good at making people laugh, but maybe there's a career in this as well. That's great. Um, Tim, because you uh, popped yeah. up on my screen too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the first time I kind of realized that, you know, I want to do something creative. Uh, I was lucky enough to go to an art school in Toronto, uh, the Etobicoke School of the Arts, where I did like a drama program. And, uh, you know, uh, and drama really like nourished uh, my love of the arts, but it wasn't until I did, a stand-up comedy unit in that class and got a chance to write stand-up comedy and perform it for my classmates. And it was like the first time I ever got a hundred percent on any project in school, like ever. And like, uh, uh, and it, it really meant a lot to me. And I remember how much I enjoyed working on it and performing and, and delivering that material that like uh, I was being recognized by authority as that, like, that's good work. I knew like I wanted to find a way to keep on doing that for the rest of my life. I love that because it's authority, but uh, that, that we're always seeking that validation, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tracy, do you want to uh, touch on this when you decided creativity would be your career? Yeah, I was 12 and the portable VHS player had just come on the market. So being able to watch movies in our own homes was the brand new thing. And I just adored it and would spend as much time as possible watching movies going to different places, feeling all my feelings in a safe, in a safe space. And it took, it took a couple months of, of living in this world of stories when it, when I really was hit by the thunderbolt that this is what I want to do. I want to tell stories and I, I want to change the world through stories. I want to, I want to change and, and, and impact people because the stories I, I was watching were impacting me so much. I, 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 so much of who I am was informed by the stories I was watching and, and how I felt about those stories, um, how I felt about the world. So yeah, I was 12 when I, when I realized it and I started writing scripts. I started saving up my money to rent video cameras because back then in the old days, we didn't have them on our phone and it would take me months to save up enough money to rent a camera for the weekend. And then I would boss all the neighborhood kids around and we would make we would make films. So that's that's where it started for me. And I haven't deviated from that path for 31 years. Wow, that is amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Holy. Yeah. Uh, At 12, you wrote your first script? I did. Yeah. And wow. I I that so is... this past this past summer I was cleaning out um my back shed. And I ended up finding those early scripts uh, and I took photos, I posted on Instagram because it was just so incredible to find them. Uh, but yeah, my, I found my very, very first script and I had typed it on a typewriter because my mother was oh. an executive assistant and we had a, a typewriter in the house and I wanted it to be typed. I didn't want to write it. So I remember needing to type it and correct it and try again. Uh, and I found it, yeah. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Oh my gosh. Um, Gulet, do you want to touch on this? When yeah. Creativity? Yeah, absolutely. Let me jump in on this one. Uh, thank you for tagging me in. Um, for me, like, yeah, I, I think it's really only maybe the last, like, doing this show with the boys um, 
that it's dawned on me that this could be a career because before that I like I was I was doing I was enjoying doing it like I mean there's a lot of moments of doubt still are a lot of moments of doubt uh where I wonder if this is for me um or if I'm cut out to do this but I definitely think yeah doing the show with the boys and getting this opportunity to like write this stuff write the content like the sketches we do and then see it come to life and seeing like this whole machine that forms to bring your ideas to life that like there's many moments where I'll even this season where I was looking at the outfits and seeing the huge studio space we're in and be like this is crazy like uh is this a career like it's still it's still dawning on me now I'm like oh wow this might be a career okay <laughs> there's people there's people who's who who are working to bring this vision to life and we're able to like you know get people jobs and also like get to create this content as well being like oh this okay yeah cool this might be a career I love that you're on season three and you're thinking that <laughs> yeah it's, it's only I, really down on me hearing now. correctly you decided mid take <laughs> I did yeah <laughs> I think yeah. I'm gonna do this <laughs> <laughs> I mean there's still because like the frankly thing you were saying earlier like the fear is still ever present it's there with right. me all the time and so that fear and doubt uh clouds my ability to dream that this could continue going so those moments when I can connect to the thing I've seen wow look at these people doing this stuff I feel like I'm about to cry and be like oh this is so cool man like you know getting to do this so yeah it's still a work in progress um yeah I think I, I don't know yeah I mean it's, I guess some somewhat similar to Goulet in that like I just never really thought it was like a possible career move but I thought I'd always try I think right when we we're going to high school uh going to university I went to film school and I think I I felt so much guilt going to film school and it's my parents were not like my mom never pushed me to be like a doctor or a lawyer or anything. She just wanted me to work indoors. And uh, and I was like, oh, we'll see about that. Um, and so I felt really guilty going to film school, but I went. And then when I was in film school, I was like a very serious student. And like all my films were like really dramatic films. Um, but I just kind of like was hoping that, you know, we'll see what happens with this undergrad degree. I'll probably end up working a temp job or somewhere in an office just as my mom hoped um and then you know just doing i was doing comedy i like everything was kind of more a fantasy and a dream more than like a goal and a decision and like it was never a likelihood in my mind but i was a small part of me always felt like you know what it could happen it, it's, it's anything is possible and um yeah so we just kept doing it kept going got better and uh, and then yeah so I never made an active decision but I'd always I guess I decided in that like I always hoped I decided to hope and dream <laughs> that works deciding to hope and dream uh, yeah. it can be a scary decision to make even just that right oh yeah all right great so I want to hear from everyone one piece of advice one sentence let's Let's, what would you say if you could go back in time and tell your younger self at the beginning of your career? Yeah, the one piece of advice would be luck doesn't exist. It's just opportunity meets preparedness. And, you know, I think it's so important to uh, work on things that you're passionate about, maybe just for the sake of the passion. And you never know when, you know, that that will pay off. Uh, and that, I think that's important. Uh, it's just something that uh, our friend, 21 said in a sign up email oh like two years ago she said just like you're always allowed to ask questions um and i was like pretty profound for me because i'm i always like assume the answer and i'm like as i said earlier it's like it's always very scary to ask questions and you're especially with film you know even on the day-to-day -day, even experienced people you're always in a new location and you there's always this kind of like pressure to know everything and to know the shot and the script that you're doing. And everyone's kind of in a constant state of like, we don't know the answer. And that's such a, like, it's such a vulnerable place because you can easily, uh, like there's just a, an opportunity just like to, to just create like a toxic environment. But if we all like kind of are really caring and, and loving and say, hey, we, we, we all don't know what we're doing but we're going to figure this out together and we'll find the answer together. Um, th then you can create like, a, uh, at the very least, a beautiful work environment. 
and if you feel scared to ask the question, then um, yeah, it's not, that's not normal. Sometimes the structure or the, you know, the oppressive system that you're in has contributed to that fear to ask that question. But you recognizing that fear is kind of like propelling you to the right step because you're yeah. further becoming empowered. You're kind of becoming more informed and enlightened. Um, so yeah, asking questions, you're allowed to ask questions. I love that. And I love that it was just a sign off email too. So yeah, it was, yeah. Like, it was great. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, Tracy, do you have some advice to your 12 year old self <laughs> or later? Yeah, I, I think I, I have, I have oodles of advice for her, um, but I'll pick one for right now. It would be to not worry about pleasing everyone else, but staying true to her voice and what she needs to say. And I think definitely when you're in the beginning of your career and you're working with producers and, and broadcasters and, and, and I definitely wanted, I wanted to make, I wanted to make everyone happy. I wanted to make, I wanted everyone to be excited. And when you, when you give other people that much power, the story, the story suffers, what you want to put out into the world suffers. And, and then ultimately, they're not happy with that. So um, it took a couple goes around for me to realize, oh, I need to guard, I need to guard this, that is what they want me to do. Um, and so you, it's, you definitely need to, you need to collaborate and work together. And everyone's feedback is important. But ultimately, you are the captain of the ship. And so you have to hold that ship and take in the information and make that journey stronger, but never give the wheel to somebody else. And, and they ultimately, they don't want the wheel. And it, it took me a, a while to realize that. Uh, I'd say, yeah, uh, during my career, um, I guess the don't hide, uh, the one door at a time. Uh, every time I, I feel like um, a sense of, a rejection or like um i go into my own head i spiral you know you, you make assumptions about what other people think uh i'm notorious for shelling up clamming going in my room finding an escape uh maybe that's writing in a book maybe that's working on paragraphs and paragraphs of like jokes and monologues and stuff like that but that doesn't that doesn't help as much as i think it did back then go out into the world meet people create life experiences and that's where you're going to find your most joy. So that's what I'd love to know. That's amazing. Um, uh, I think for me, it just, yeah, like, uh, like just do you like, I mean, I, I think that's like a, something, uh, one of my uh, favorite comics, Gerard Carmichael, uh, has said of like, just, it's so hard to listen to yourself. Um, and so like, if I go back to my younger self, it was so much, I mean, always pressure too, like you're growing up in, in a home and sometimes the home might not be conducive to just doing what you want because uh, you got parents who uh, have a lot more power and say in these things, but being like, oh man, like I, I, if I go back to my younger self, I'd be like, just go out there a little more and just, yeah, just try to find Goulet, you know? And that's, I think also the, I'm, I'm on that journey along with discovering my voice in comedy. It's funny because, I mean, I'm, I'm sure we all have tons of advice we could give to our younger selves. And it was really valuable to hear just those tidbits from each of you. One of the types of advice I think we would agree either was useful if we got it or could have been useful if we didn't is just ways to champion our real selves and not feel like sort of our real self had to be put into some sort of box or shell or... Um, and Tracy, I love how you spoke on the fact that when you do that, no one ends up happy anyway. Like it, it's something that you do in the moment thinking because it's a people pleasing mechanism and then it sort of backfires. Um, and one of the reasons why all of you are sitting here speaking with us today is because you have found ways to empower just not yourselves as individuals, but others, particularly those who are from different diverse communities or or groups of people who have maybe historically been othered or marginalized or kind of shut out of a lot of the storytelling that goes on. So while I know that this next question, we probably could discuss it all day, hopefully we can give some of those who are watching us at home just a little bit of the insight on 
what work was done behind the scenes that landed you all here today as Sandy Ross Award winners. I'm hoping each of you can share something that is a way that you specifically have pushed for diversity, whether it is in casting, which I think was mentioned earlier, maybe by Vance, or one of those ways where it would have been easier to just go along with it, but you did make a point of sticking up for diversity and inclusion. I think generally in our scripts, if we want a character like that, we're like this character uh, needs to be white for this joke to work or the scene to work, because maybe we are making fun of uh, uh, whiteness in some way, we will specifically put that in the casting or it will be written in the script. But for the most part, we're like, assume it's not white, uh, just open casting, bring everyone in and try to focus on bring in people who are more diverse and times will push for people who even if they didn't have um what maybe the uh you know producers or um cbc might think had the best reading be like we trust that put him get them on set that they can figure this out that it's not mm -hmm. extremely difficult to play this character that with enough help and coaching and support environment that you know, and there's many times where we have people who are on our sets that have not been in front of a crew of this size ever. And so like, that's fun then to see them get on set and knock it out of the park, which we knew they could do. It's just, they mm -hmm. haven't had the chance to do it. And it, it. Yeah. And it's the same. We try to do the same with our writer's room as well. We try to, like, we have a big list of like, like a lot of it is like people that we've seen throughout the community like the improv stand-up and sketch community where we're like, oh, these people are really funny. They just need a shot. Um, and sometimes like it's, you know, I, I it's the the challenge for me, um, accepting an award like this, sometimes I always like worry because I'm like, I always ask myself, are we doing enough, you know? Um, and we might be doing a lot relative to what the unfortunate norm is of the industry currently. Um, but I, I don't like, as we said in our speech, like we don't want to, be the standard so for me it's like we actually yeah we have a lot of diverse casting and there are, but there are some times where i'm like oh well you know this is not necessarily like this person got this line and they probably generally might never be on tv uh if our show wasn't on the air but because our show is on the air it's great they get their first credit um but at the, at the same time sometimes it, it's hard to be like hey we did it we broke barriers because they only got that one line mm -hmm. um i think for us, it's like, it's great that we get to kind of speak on a lot of issues that are personal to us. And because they're very person personal and specific to us, they kind of do break the mold and they kind of uh, dismantle uh, pre-existing uh, notions of what race and identity are. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's really challenging to be like, hey, we did it because it's like, it's like we we did we, we suggested this this is what we really, really believe in we feel like the casting should it should be you know reflective of what is real to us and what you know a show should reflect you know a toronto if the show takes place in toronto the people on a ttc bus should be in the show it that yeah that is the challenge still we always kind of push for it and i feel like we're again three point percentage we're hitting like 40 percent at least um but we want to we want to we want to get that to like that free throw percentage <laughs> does anyone play basketball anyways we want to be like 100 percent, you know <laughs> yeah and if i can really quickly you're doing it i would argue that if you felt like hey we did it we fixed you know inequality and the whole the whole world is diverse now that would be a really clear sign that like you're out of touch so mm -hmm. i would offer that it's a good sign that you sometimes think are we doing enough or have we done anything yet and our peers on the diversity and inclusion committee definitely agree that you are so that's the reason we're even having this discussion that's why all five of you are award winners tonight mm -hmm. i up until this point i've i've told indigenous stories and so they are inherently diverse because of it. Um, and I've been in charge of them. So I've been able to set the terms of, of what that means and what those stories are, what those parameters are, and, and the ideas that 
the and I've I've worked with a lot of non-indigenous people and I'm I I love collaboration but there's still that it's not a world that you you get to make up. Our world exists. We exist. There are things we do, there are things we don't do. Communities are different, cultures are different. Um and so it's it's been interesting in that in the creation process where it's creation process is fun. You know, there's ideas flying all around the room, but but to hold that line and say, okay, that's that's a great idea, or oh, that's funny, but it doesn't work for this character, and here's why. And so there's, or it doesn't work for this community, and here's why. This is how this is what we are about. This is what this is how we think. And by no means do I do I feel like I'm I'm I, I represent and can speak on behalf of all Indigenous people. But the stories I'm telling. I guard those stories um, and and stay true to world. That's really important to me because growing up, I did not see myself reflected on screens. I did not see my community, my cousins, my mother, my sisters reflected on screens. And and it, it, it takes it's it's a part of the messaging we receive that we we don't belong. We we aren't important enough to be on the screen. So if we are going to be on that screen, it's important to me that that it is reflecting who we are, because I think it would have made a big difference to to young Tracy to to see herself reflected and, and that message come to her that that she matters, that she is important, that her people are special um, and not not these caricatures, not these not these one dimensional tragic villainous storylines. I mean, that is what I grew up watching and and then you experience racism in the real world as well. And so you're getting at, you're you're getting the message all over the place uh, about about where you sit in society. And so I want my work to do to 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 change that um, for society, first and foremost, um, but also for all those little girls and boys out there growing up watching watching TV. Um, and we are, we are there now with the Aboriginal People's Television Network. Uh, Indigenous kids are able to grow up and, and see not only their community, but so many other communities represented on the Aboriginal People's Television Network. And uh, that's where I got my start with my career. And it is really the reason why I am here because they empowered me to sit exactly where I wanted to sit. And I did not have to convince them. They understood what it, what it was and said, go, go, go. And then I got to a place where I started collaborating with, with, with other people, um, non-Indigenous people, white people, and they didn't quite get it. But I had had a good 10 years uh, working with my own people through the Aboriginal People's Television Network. And at that point had built up the strength to be able to sit in those rooms with all those white people and say, nope, we're not gonna do that. Nope, that's not how it's gonna go. We need to hire this person. This is not gonna fly. We are firing that person because they are, because of the way they are treating um various peoples in our in our on our crew for instance so sitting in your power and owning that power um makes a huge difference but it's also incredibly scary because getting these getting these chances to sit in these rooms or for these doors to open and then for you to sit there and have to say in a very and this part's exhausting in in a very delicate sensitive compassionate way you need to show them that what they said was was not okay or that what they want to do is not okay and you have to do it in such a way that their ego does not implode and then you have to deal with that so that kind of maneuvering i think is a lot of what i've done but and it's it's hard it's sometimes you just want to you, you you do you want to you want to leave the room and sort of slam the door and go, are you, are you kidding me? Did you just say that? You didn't just say that to me. Mm -hmm. um, but you can't, you can't because that person's an executive and you want them to green light the show because if I can get the show on the air, it can make a difference. And if I can get on the show, if I can get on the air and make a difference, then that opens the, the way for others behind to get in the door. Jumping off what uh, uh, Tracy's beautiful answer earlier, uh, the big thing is like, because now 
we are on the third season of the show and are, are just recently become EPs as well. And learning about um, how much power we had all along and how much say we could have had. So when friends who are now in the beginning parts of this journey, like signing options for the first time and talking to production companies and figuring out like um, how to create now the show that they want to get green lit. Uh, my big thing is always telling them like that uh, at, you can ask for more. In fact, in fact, a lot more is given to creators who are white and that you can ask, like talk, like having people that represent you and represent your best interest to know that like, uh, I wish sometimes things were um, broken down in a way. Cause like, we're all very new to the industry, you know, relatively. And so not knowing how, what an option deal was like literally having to go to ask people the community what's an option deal can someone explain this to us and being like not having a lawyer for our first time around but now being like oh telling people like here's who we use now use this person have them advocate for you so that you can come in with all the tool sets that you have so that then you can create an environment where you're protected that you know that your interests are protected you're not going to be getting screwed over in some way where like they own rights that you don't want to give up. You're getting the credits you deserve so that you can use that for other opportunities and that you make sure like if there is money on the table that you're getting what you're owed, you know? Um, so that has been a big thing of telling to people. It's still something I'm reminding myself because I'm still very scared, very scared. I'm a scared boy. Um, and still remind myself as many times as I can that like asking like just yeah as, as trace was saying stepping to that power it's very frightening it's very scary because there's not a lot of people like us in this room and even for our show as we talk about like yeah we are pushing for more diversity but still it's still predominantly we're surrounded by a lot of white people you know yeah. and so we are outnumbered <laughs> at, at any given point and so being like even we as a group confer with each other on set when we want to change stuff before we go out to somebody because just individually going as one person still feels scary um so just around people that like yeah you can ask for more and that you can get a lot more than you think you can thank uh, you I'll, I'll, I'll jump in yeah, if yeah. I can. um and i i think it, it, it i love all of that and i agree completely and I, I i think this just builds on it i think it's about finding the right partners especially right now you know diversity is hot um so i think that there's a lot of there's a lot of white people who um, want to get in on it because there are now funds specifically for it and, and everyone's looking for it. So you, you just, you need to find the partners who are in it with you for the right reason and are there to empower you and not take from you, um, not use you for their own benefit and, and, um, I, I don't know about you guys, but I mean, I've certainly, these were hard lessons to learn early in my career. And once you get, once you, and once you partner with somebody on a project, yes, you could leave, but you're leaving your project because that is the way the business works. You know, you do, you sign over your, your idea, um, to that production company, unless you create your own production company. And then, I mean, that's a whole different thing, but I, I don't do that. I, I work with production companies and and do have to option my ideas off and and get into this potentially very long term relationship. If you're if you're lucky and you have a show that goes three, four, five seasons, you're in it for the long haul. It is like a marriage. And so if you end up married to someone and then you find out that they're abusive um, or exploitive it's you then have it's 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 your baby do you walk away from your baby how can you walk away from your baby and so you have to be very very careful who you choose to parent that baby with and i think our community is really a resource because we we share with each other we we let each other know don't go over there <laughs> Don't, don't go there, um, but I have two people I can recommend that I think you should talk to who I think would be potentially awesome as an awesome with you or awesome for the project. Um, because if you're paired up with the wrong person, not only, not only could your baby suffer, but 
your you could suffer big time i've i've definitely i've had i've heard the horror stories and i've had a few of my own where it it it, it a bad relationship, bad work relationship can just take all the joy away. And what we do is, is the hard work. It is, there's, there is a lot of hard work, but it's fun because we love it. But if someone takes away the love, it's, it's the biggest crime. So that's something I tell, tell people getting to the business, young people. I know in the beginning, you're just so desperate for somebody to see you and for somebody to like your idea that you may just say, yes, here, let me sign, take it, let's do it. Um, but you, you, you and your project may end up suffering for it. So definitely take the time and find that right partner because, because it's so important. Yeah. It is 2021, I think for a variety of reasons, progress has been made. And Tracy, you even just alluded to the fact that there's funds specifically out there now earmarked diversity in a way that probably the industry hasn't really seen before. You could say that there's been a ton of progress in the past year, and we never want to um, downplay that. This next question is kind of looking forward. How do we keep up this momentum? Or is there something specifically that you hope to see from allies in the next year that you haven't seen so far? And Tracy, we can start with you and then we'll ask uh, the rest of the gang. It's a big one. Um, it's, a, it's a big one because I still think there's, there's tons that has, that has to happen. I think, I think we are, we're just getting ramped up, which is exciting. And I, I think as we go into 2022, you know, the big fear is that it was a splash in the pan. It was a fad and it was necessary to respond to the moment and everyone will then sort of sit back and put their feet up. And I think it's imperative on all of us not to let that happen. Mm -hmm. It's it's our community that has to keep up that pressure. Unfortunately, it falls on, it does fall on us. A lot of the work falls on us, but to keep that pressure up so that our allies who do hold the power don't get to sit back. Um, so I just want to see, I want to see more of what is currently happening continue to happen. I am excited about all of the different projects that are being greenlit right now. And I'm, I'm looking forward to them coming out and just amazing everyone. And, and again, proving everyone wrong. I feel like my whole career has been consistently about proving everyone wrong. And at some point, I want to get to the point where we no longer have to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's where that's where I'm I'm hoping we're going to go, and and both both on a diversity level, but also on a gendered level as well. Like as a woman, it is a it is a different experience. Um, you know, the risk, the risk, and the doubt. Somehow, as a female director there's more risk with me than a male director like that is still out there so so i'm looking forward to a, a day and a time where we aren't having to have these conversations because it's all it's all it's it's equal mm -hmm. and and we aren't having to fight for every single inch yep. but we still do we still have we have we have yards and yards and yards to still gain here um and we have to keep the pressure on our allies so that they, they don't get to sit back. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you for that. And so anyone in Tall Boys to Men, is there either something specific that you're hoping to see from allies in the year ahead? Uh, or is there, I guess, advice on how, what we should do to keep this momentum up instead of letting it just be a flash in the pan as Tracy said? I think uh, maybe, uh, oh, Tim, no, please go ahead. I think something may be helpful to keep the progression of the momentum is, yeah, continuing to find the young people out there now who are being inspired by this content and seeing themselves represented in new ways that they haven't before and learning how to nurture that talent and have them grow. Because I like that's really, I think, how it how it happens organically. And um, and, I, and I think it, it already is. But uh, I think the, the more you can do to support that is helpful. Uh -huh. yeah that and also like uh just um yeah like there's still so 
like I'm, I've been doing this now for a few years now with the boys and it's still a lot of the mechanisms that feel so murky and I don't quite understand how this thing's work. So I wish like more transparency of like, how do shows work? How are shows made? Um, who are the decision makers who hold power? Cause like still not quite understanding like, like how some of this stuff comes together, how decisions are made. And then also with trying to get more diverse people behind like in the crew especially of being mm -hmm. like changing sometimes the work environment because this is a very grueling industry to mm -hmm. be in front of the camera even more grueling behind the camera of being like well if you want to bring more people are diverse people who are already like who might be struggling to make ends meet willing to give up their entire day entire lives for months to do the thing that might run them into the ground uh and so make environments that are work hours that are more reasonable so people can you can bring people who can't commit to 14 hour days you know um then and and trying to find different ways of also because we were trying to bring more people um behind the camera and running into issues with like at times those people aren't don't have the hours to be part of the different unions mm -hmm. and so then the unions understandably putting up a bit of a fight and being like well these structures have to change because the thing that you're wanting to do, you're also actively fighting. You don't realize you're active fighting it, but you're actually active fighting. Like, how can you relax some of these rules or bring up more people to encourage, you know, to, to grow the base of, that already exists, but just to bring them into these productions of these rooms. A lot of food for thought there. And then uh, Franco, you look like you're ready to yeah, go. Yeah, I was just gonna <laughs> agree. I was just agreeing with uh, Gulad uh, in terms of like, yeah, having more people have access uh, into like uh, the workspace uh, because there are like barriers uh, union and otherwise and also like it'd be great to see just see more diverse showrunners in the industry and more writers as well because there has been instances where you know uh, shows that just you know there's these excuses that executive producers might say where it's like oh well, we, we looked all over the place for uh, diverse talent and we just couldn't find it so let's just throw this thing into the dumps <laughs> so it's like uh yeah let, 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 let's find yeah. let's so if that's the case then like you know maybe the issue was that you you didn't hire enough junior writers you know maybe there are cases where people are just being there as like a daily writer and then they're not you know you're, there's not enough infrastructure to support them to become staff writers and i don't know i just feel like sometimes there are instances where people's stories are kind of like taken for like you know the 400 dollars daily rate yeah. and it's turned into an entire episode and they don't get anything from it uh uh um yeah uh more indigenous people in bipoc spaces uh i feel like uh when we talk about bipoc uh we're also talking about the exclusion of indigenous people a lot of the time so uh yeah i'd love to see uh Stim was saying more talent come up uh go, go find the talent go find those young people that want to be in the film industry who want to be uh want to be on stages who want to be stage managers you know there's find find create more space and 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 then plug those spaces with little Indian kids and, and then one more go girl, excuse me, my colloquial term, but uh, indigenous, uh, strong indigenous youth. So uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's, yeah. I think you're allowed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. really depends on who you're talking to. <laughs> um, well, thank you, all of you. Um, this has been such a great talk and there's so much to think about. And I especially like Gulit bringing up like unions and, um, and, you know, the access, and that's something we all have to think about, you know, as because we're lucky we belong to I, all of us, I think are part of yeah, all of us are part of unions that take care of us and look out for us. Um, so thank you for bringing that up and lots of lots of good points. I wish we could talk all night, but um, we all have really busy lives, I think. So uh, I just want to ask lastly, what is next for all of you? What are you working on? Um, we can start at Tall Boys. Go ahead, and then Tracy, you'll uh, jump on in whenever they're done. <laughs> we're gonna be going to the editing room for uh, season three, and that's what we're working on. Just focusing on that. And uh, yeah, if anyone's got anything, uh, uh, I'm with Amanda Rosenthal Talent Agency. Uh, uh, my phone number is four one six. Only half kidding. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, no, uh, here in Turkey, yeah, just finishing off the season and then like resting and then figuring, yeah, what what's what's next on the uh, what's next on the docket. Mm-hmm. And that's to do some live shows again, maybe tour and see some see some of the country and and bring it, the show to people around. Live show is something we all miss, I think. <laughs> Uh, so I'm in the middle of directing right now. It's a, a, sh- a new show for Amazon Prime. It's called Three Pines. Ooh. Yes, yes, it's Amazing. very exciting. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're um, we're seven days in, so I, I have 20 days in total. Really, really enjoying that. And a uh, lovely surprise when I got to set. About half of the crew I, I knew from five seasons of Mohawk Girls. So uh-huh. it's been like a wonderful reunion as well. We're having a blast. And I'm really excited. I'm really excited for for people to see um, this. And I'm developing uh, two television shows right now. And I have a feature that I've written. Uh, We'll see. We'll see when I get to shoot that. And I've just been hired on an American show to go direct it in the new year. But Mm -hmm. the papers aren't signed yet, so I can't say which show, but, but it's comedy. And I'm really excited to be back in the comedy universe with that. So oh yeah, God. lots of exciting things. So many exciting things. Not like, do you sleep? Oh. Wow, that was a yeah. lot, Tracy. That's awesome. <laughs> a little bit, I, I get it where I can, yes. Okay, so I know we've already said thank you so many times, but seriously, thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much. We have so much gratitude to spend time with you at this table and hear your answers. And um, yeah, seriously, some power players at this industry. This is amazing. I'm like, look up to all of you and all that you do. So I just, uh, in closing, I want to say thank you again from the committee. And we know that, and congratulations on your win. Congrat- huge congratulations. You deserve it. Um, and I know that Sandy Ross would be incredibly proud of the momentum and progress that we were making. Definitely. And we also want to give a big thank you so much to everyone who has been tuning in, joining us today. Thank you. Cannot thank you enough. And diverse ACTRA Toronto members and diverse doesn't just mean BIPOC, it means everything else on top. Um, and we want to invite you and hope that you'll get involved with the DNI committee. Please follow us on social media at ACTRA Diversity TO and join the committee by signing up on the ACTRA Toronto website and you'll get to hang out with Shatrice and I. Who wouldn't want that? Um, Please do also remember to check out the latest works from our Sandy Ross Award winners this year. So for Beans, it is available to stream in the comfort of your own home. And for Tall Boys, you can always watch that on CBC Gem. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.